Hey, what's up, Leron here? Let me make sure that the live works well on YouTube. And thank you so much to anyone who is joining me today. It's going to be a fun one. Yes, I can hear myself a bit. <laughs> so thank you so much. Hey, Hank, how are you doing? Uh, let me know who's in the house. Um, and we'll get started. Today's another critique live stream. Uh, hey, Eugenie, how are you doing? Um, we're going to look at a lot of your paintings. I have a huge lot of paintings, actually, two groups. Hopefully, you can go over everything. Worst case, we'll save some for next time. Now, for anyone who is here, if you can take a moment and just drop a little itty bitty uh, like on this live stream, uh, it can really help more people find it. Uh, and with that, I think we'll get started. We'll just let some people get in because right now I see eight people, which is too little. There's more than eight people being critiqued here. Uh, hey, John or Jan, thank you so much for being here. Hey, Phoenix, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I remember you. I think we talked uh, via email, right? Uh, so today we're going to, uh, I took it up a notch. We're going to have, again, a whole bunch of paintings. And in addition to that, uh, I will include some fun stuff. So, for example, the first painting that uh, you're going to see in just one second, I actually corrected some some mistakes in it to make it really obvious uh, what could be fixed. And then others I turned black and white. So it's going to be really fun to actually see how the painting uh, can be corrected. Uh, let me just post a story that I'm live now on Instagram and make sure that um, people see this. I should do this more. Uh, I don't do this nearly enough small for the story and then live now join here <laughs> and i'm gonna see what you're saying in just one sec uh but yeah other than that how have you been doing uh, i hope you're doing well i'm really tired we slept uh, about five hours because we woke up really early for a workout which happens uh once a week like a workout with an actual trainer um and it was really <laughs> It was really uh, just tiring, and I went to I went to. Okay, okay, just want to make sure it works. Good, we're good, we're good. Thank you so much. So in any case, we have Phoenix here. We have Taco fourteen fourteen. Hi, looking forward to the video. Thank you so much for being here, Taco. Um, uh, we have Ujaini. Uh, love your paintings. Thank you so much, James here. Uh, hey, how are you doing? Uh, <coughs> hey, Phoenix. Yes, yes, yeah, I remember. Indeed, please share references. Yes, I will share references for everything. Oh, I think I forgot to add one that was sent to me later uh, by Ian, but that's never mind. <laughs> Not the end of the world. Hey, St. Inky, how are you doing? Hey, Nancy. Good morning from Akron, Ohio. Snow here this morning. Wow, snow. Uh, hey, Delia, how are you doing? Looking forward to the critiques. Uh, thank you so, so much. Hey, Stefania. Uh, hello from Italy. Hey, John, how are you doing? Uh, hi, Leron. Hope you're well, my friend. I hope you have a great live stream. Looking forward to seeing it later on. Yeah, you told me that you won't be able to join. So, yeah, no worries. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to say, again, if you can, everyone, take a moment, drop a like on the vid, and we'll get started, actually. Let me show you what I've got here. So, this is Painting Critique <laughs> number two live. Um, and that's the date, right? The date's correct, right? Uh, hey, Anna from uh, Mexico. Thank you so much for being here. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start. I have the names of as the last time of people who sent me in paintings. Now, I don't know. Sometimes I get the username wrong. Sometimes I get the name wrong. Maybe it's it's a name I'm familiar with because I got it in an email and you aren't. So I try to straddle the line of, you know, not posting um, full names necessarily, but you'll see. You'll see. Uh, and hey, White Reza, hey, Leron, hope you're doing well. After a big break due to a trip in the Arctic, that's cool. I finally found the motivation to paint again. Oh, that's amazing. That has to be inspiring. I mean, that's just beautiful views. Uh, by the way, White Reza, there's, I believe, your work here is too. I just, I'm not sure if it's the first or second group. So basically, everyone who sent me things a long time ago, I put in the first group to show, to give priority to, and then I did a second group. Uh, so we'll see. We'll we'll scroll and find out. Hey, YM. Hey, Leron. Haven't seen a stream for you in forever. Hope you're doing well. Greetings from Singapore. Thank you so much for being here. I don't know why you haven't seen it. Is it because you just weren't tuning in or YouTube stopped recommending me like they tend to do? I don't know, but let me know. Uh, hey, Judy. How are you doing? From Massachusetts. Hey, Christine. How are you doing? Uh, happy to have you here. Okay, so let's get started here. And we're going to be... It's going to be super cool because right now, the people who are here... here um, uh, have earned 
to see the best, I think, piece of critique I have for today. So this was sent to me by La Sanchez. And I really, really like this. Uh, I like a lot of things about this painting. Uh, we'll get started with this first one. Thank you so much again. If anyone who's just joining in, we're doing critiques today. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, and we're starting with the first one sent in by La Sanchez. Now, this is, and you can see already down here, I guess, uh, what I wrote. This is a, just a very common mistake of focusing a lot on the darks and the lights and failing to capture enough of the mid values, okay? And that's something that everyone does. I do it all the time, and I have to force myself to stop doing it almost every painting. Um, so what I love about this one, the drawing's accurate. It's beautiful. It's a dog comedy. You got to love it. Uh, and it's captured really well. The shapes work. And honestly, the painting uh, technique is, looks really good, too. I love the background. I love that it's changed. It looks really cool. It's sometimes a pain point of people not knowing what to do with the background. So it's really, really awesome. And I love the creativity. And I also love the colors. I think it's a good choice. Now, here is my correction. So if you look under the, this, the nose area, right, there is a shadow that is mid-value. And it's very easy to miss these things. So the best way I can explain this to you is just to scroll down and show you my correction. So look at what I did by adding the mid values. And hopefully you can see the difference between the two. Let me zoom out just a tiny bit and you can see the face, right? Hopefully you can see both right now. So it's very easy to miss out on those mid values because you see the dark fur around the pattern itself. And, you know, when I paint, I don't focus as much on local color, which is, in this example, the dark fur and the light fur. I focus more on what the light and shadow is doing, and I prioritize that. So what I would do is prioritize that mid-value together with the darker fur, maybe paint it in the first wash very, very, you know, directly, and then I'll add some of the dark fur, right? Uh, but just by adding the mid values, look at the difference in the depth it gives the face. And as an added bonus, I actually uh, used a bit of a um, cooler color because most of the dog is painted with warm browns. I wanted to negate that and kind of balance it out. And so I actually added a bit of blue. Uh, and I think it looks really cool. And look at the ear, especially the right, the ear that is to our right, but it's actually his or her left ear. Look at how much depth that mid value adds and this is actually a part that was captured well in the original but just a touch more and it can go a really really long way uh, i hope to do more corrections in the future like out of all the paintings i get to correct more it's just so time consuming just to prepare for these so i can try like correct a few here and there right uh let's see what you're saying in the chat here what did i miss why I simply didn't find it. Okay, okay, good. That I prefer that. Like you take your time and and devote it to whatever you want. I hope just YouTube doesn't you know block me out or something. Hey John, we're off to a great start. This painting has personality. It's great when people paint their pets with love. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Whenever I paint a subject that's close to me, it's just a much better result. And White Reza says, well, now we have the corrections demonstrated. Yeah, definitely. Now I need to work on my setup so that I can correct live. I can actually do these changes live on the screen. I'll, I'll get that figured out. John actually really helps me send me a few solutions. Uh, so we'll see about that. But if I can paint over, I can, of course, show you Photoshop, right? But I need to figure out how that will work technically. Um, but I think that will be a good way of kind of approaching this. My eye, this eye hurts because I didn't sleep well. I have a pain here. I think it feels like a mosquito bit me on the eyelid. You know, that sometimes happens. That's really annoying. Um, uh, Lexi says, uh, yeah, this is awesome. By the way, hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Lexi. Really appreciate it. So, yeah. So, to conclude this first one, great job. I love the colors. I love the drawing. Very accurate. The ears are a little too big, but, I mean, who cares? It's so cute. This reminds me of Ruth's ears. Uh, but then, again, that common mistake of missing a bit of uh, the mid-values. And then, once you add them in, it gives it so much more depth, especially for light subjects or white fur it really makes a difference. One more thing I will say is try maybe experiment with not being too literal with the fur. I don't actually paint each and every hair. You can paint it as one big shape and just work on the edges to create a feeling of fur. Right? Look at the look at how I did the shadow. The shadow is just a tr it's like a transparent layer of watercolor right here in the upper part of the neck. The way you know it's fur is because of the shape of the outline. I didn't use a lot of individual brush marks or digital brush marks in this example to to uh, 
to indicate the shadow. I use just one even wash, quote unquote, and just those edges of the fur, that's the thing that gives it the shape of fur without painting too many of the of the details, right? So I hope that first one um, is, a, is, a, is a clear example, right? And Dahlia, definitely. Midtones are often ignored. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so let's move on to the next one by Mandy Lowton. So this is really uh, a neat example. This was a picture from Pixabay, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and what's really cool about it is if I scroll down, I did turn it black and white so you can see some of the differences more clearly. I will say a few things without even looking at the black and white version. First off, I love the, the colors matching is on point. It looks really similar. It's a much better color matching than I'm able to do, by the way, most of the time. Now, the thing I would work on correcting here is maybe a couple of things. First, uh, just attention to the overall composition with the dark shapes, because what you kind of missed is in the mountain in the background. And by the way, I love that the sun rays and everything that looks really cool. So there's a lot of courage and, and really striving to recreate that impression, which is tough. It's really, really tough. And the technique is pretty good, right? The technique is not bad at all. Um, when I began, got started, my technique was off so much. Uh, but look at that mountain in the back, right? The way it works in the reference photo, and you can see this again, black and white, a little better. It's just one shape that goes from dark to light, right? And you see it here. One shape that goes from dark to light because there is a fog in the valley and then it creates a, light, a lit bottom part, right? And what you did is you kind of lost that feel of a of a of one complete shape because you split your effort between these two hills, right? When you attempt to uh, paint every small transition of value or of edge, sometimes it's easy to lose track of the overall picture. That probably is something that happens to me in almost every painting too. So you have to always bring back your attention to what's the main shape that that I can create. And it's not just for simplification purposes. There is no real reason to simplify when you think about it. Like, why simplify? Why would you want to simplify? What's the benefit of it? Why not just paint it fully realistically, right? So one thing is that it makes the process easier to simplify. But another thing is that we tend to uh, perceive real life in a simplified manner. Our eyes can't see all of that. And so simplifying it not only makes it easier to paint, makes it clearer for the viewer. It actually makes it more realistic in a way, funny enough. So yeah, so I will say that as a main thing, that mountain in the back could be much more clear, right? Now, much deeper shadows in the foreground. You could go much, much darker. Your mid values are actually on point, which is a strong thing that I don't see very often. Those greens and yellows in the foreground, they're as dark as the reference photo, which is great. They're probably even darker in some spots, but very close. You know what? I think it's Really close. I think it's so close. That hill that's closer to us than the one behind it, they're just almost dead on. That's really good. So just if you add those darkest values to the foreground, it will really help it. And then the mountain from the top from behind frames that, starts dark, goes down evenly and becomes lighter. And that's really going to um, make it a, a better impression, a clearer impression, more realistic. And you'll get a clearer view of those sun rays that come from the side because you'll have a darker backdrop. Um, so I hope that makes sense. One final thing I'd say, the drawing could use some improvement, but maybe you changed it uh, in order to change it. Maybe you were interested in changing it, so that's perfectly fine, right? The trees are at a bit of an angle, if you notice, because they grow against the hillside, and you kind of lost that. So maybe the angle should be like this, and then the trees go along with that angle. Uh, but other than that, it's really minor nitpicking. Other than that, great, great job. Really good job. Uh, so yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's revisit the comments a bit, see what you're saying. Megan says, thank you, uh, you're on your uh, Le or Les Sanchez. Your doggo is cute, So uh, and so is your painting. Thanks, everyone, for these critiques and lives. Yeah, definitely happy I can help. Uh, and by the way, next week, we'll probably not do a, another one of these critiques. I'll do a painting process or, or a chat. We'll see about that. So just know that if you send me some stuff, it's going to be in a future video, but probably not next week. Uh, white reside immediately gives depth. Reminds me of snow painting, especially snowy mountains. Yeah, same thing with the white. Yep. Why am uh, why really great work on the colors? Isabella says greetings from Poland. The background seems like a Ukrainian flag. Oh wait, is it? Does it seem like a Ukrainian flag? I'm not sure. With the color, you mean? I haven't thought about it at all. Oh yeah, I see it. So it's like a very muted blue, but with a bit of yellow. Yeah, that's interesting. That's cool. 
Uh, Monica says, good morning, Liron, and all in the chat. Anna is here too. Love it when the painting is more interesting than the reference. Yeah, that's that's actually really fun. Uh, and love those sun rays indeed. Beautiful work. John says, yes, the colors, that's such an engaging gold, I think. Uh, also think the background has good use of backgrounds. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of it comes down to, uh, I just want you to have the ability and skill to do whatever you want, right? So that if you change something, it's deliberate and not because you didn't know how to paint something, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, St. Inky says, stunning. John, how are you doing? Good morning. Welcome aboard. Uh, let's move on to the next one. We have a lot of paintings to go through. So we're going to pick up the pace. These were sent to me by Rebecca. Now, Rebecca, if I'm not mistaken, you can get her IG address. If I'm not mistaken, I'm, sh I'm sure I've seen the pigeon on the left. Now, I'm not sure if I saw it on Instagram or you sent it to me privately, but I, or maybe it was even a critique video, but I'm sure I've seen it and it just is so good looking, all of them. So in your case, I actually don't have much to say or correct almost at all, because um, it's a lot of it is comes down to stylistic choice and the choices you make in terms of uh, uh, simplification. For the, the pigeon or dove, I have, I have no feedback whatsoever. It's perfect. It's perfect. There, it has everything, right? It has a variety of edges. It has a variety of temperatures, a bit of cool, a bit of warm. It has a cool background. The the way you um, painted the barbed wire, I assume, is so good, right? It's really, um, I'm sure it's close to what it looks like uh, in the reference or, you know, in real life. Just really, really awesome. Uh, and yeah, I couldn't couldn't give any feedback because it's it's just professional and good looking, and you don't go overboard with the feathers. You even I think you use the technique to indicate that just by pouring in uh, wet paint into um, paint that starts to dry very gently, right? So excellent work. Same for all of these. If anything, I would say I love that you added a cool background here. What I would do is just like the pigeon, I would think about incorporating different temperature with temperatures within the bird because just like the dog from earlier th this bird on the right is entirely brown which is fine uh, but in real life local color usually isn't as dominant right so you got the blue on the beak which is really cool and again this is probably your choice uh, it's probably not like a thought but just giving you a suggestion maybe for the darks for the eye you can inject a bit more coolness and cool doesn't have to be really cool it doesn't have to be super blue it can be just cool uh, in relations to this brown, right? Uh, same for the butterfly, it's just really good. I don't, I don't, I will be very careful to give feedback on such work because it's honestly so good looking. Uh, so we're going to pick up the pace and then I'm going to revisit your comments. So let me know, uh, so let me know your thoughts and feel free to ask any questions. I'll get to them, okay? We're not going to take any live ones this time because I have a lot, uh, but maybe we can do that in the future. Uh, Sahitya sent me this one. The bottom one is uh, the painting and the top one was the reference. So again, when you paint from an already existing painting, it's going to be secondhand impression, right? So that's one thing to take into consideration. It's not painting from real life. So all the stylization compounds, right? The things the uh, artist did originally compound and you can really feel it. Um, so a lot of it will depend on what you want to achieve with this and what you are striving for, right? And I don't believe you wrote that for me. If you are striving to create like an exact copy of the original one, there is, of course, a lot to fix. Uh, but if you're just doing a fun study that kind of tries to recreate the style in your approach or in your way, then, of course, like there's not much to say. I will say that you really uh, dedicated yourself to getting the colors in the right places. So the color pattern is very similar to the reference photo, which is good. Um, the original medium, I don't know what it is, acrylics, maybe oils even, probably looks a, a lot like acrylics to me. Um, there is a bit more organization, especially in the iris uh, in the pupil of the values. So that's one thing to not lose uh, sight of. When you're using multiple colors, when you're doing this very chromatic work, I'll say chromatic because it has all chroma in it, right? Almost like a chromatic scale in music that has all notes in it. Um, it's still important to not lose sight of the light and shadow. So when I take a few steps back, I'm missing a bit of that brightness in the middle and then shadow in the in the area around it, right? So that's one thing to pay attention to. Um, the, the eyelashes could be improved maybe, uh, and that's something a lot of people need to work on, like the confidence with the brush marks, not being scared to just swoosh it out, right? Um, it feels a little overworked and a bit timid. So practice this. Uh, I'm sure there's a bit of like... Um, 
there's a layering of light over dark here in the original one, which is really neat, a bit hard to get with watercolor, of course. But yeah, one thing I'll say really good is that highlights on the pupil or iris, I always confuse it, I think iris, right? Pupil is the dark dot. So iris, I really like how you manage to do the white and then blue where the pupil is. So that's really neat. So again, depending on what you wanted to achieve with this, um, I would challenge you to do the exact same one, but incorporate wet and wet. So maybe the iris, you do it just wet and wet. Not everything, but just the iris, right? Um, Pre-wet it and then try and put the colors in. That could be an interesting experience, I think. Uh, Stefania, here we go. So finally, it's your turn and you should be here. So we're good. Uh, so I'll go over some of these. And this is great. We have the reference, my paintings uh, and, the, and my references. Um, so yeah, one thing I noticed, and that's kind of a recurring theme. So you can see here. Um, is just the flow. So something that is missing for me is that togetherness in the shape. So if you look here in the in the reference in the middle, the entire shadow is one shape with variation to it. It's one shape of kind of abstract light and shadow. And here I was able, even though I made a lot of mistakes and my approach was very rough. And by the way, I have like five paintings of this same guy, like a lot of them because uh, I practiced this a lot, but still the shadows are connected together. I think a bit of that flow got lost here, so that's something to work on. The drawing could be more accurate, that, but that's fine. I like that you combine the hair with the background. That's actually a good idea. Um, that in this one, I don't even remember if I did, right? But just a bit more organization in the shapes of shadow. So decide where the border of the shadow is and commit to stopping it there. And while you're working on the shape, try and keep the flow together. OK, a lot of it could be uh, maybe bad paper, not using enough water, not mixing enough. Uh, so have all of these things set up and ready to your advantage. Right. So then you get the flow to be better. Right. Same thing here with the flow. If you look at the background, especially also a bit with the water. Uh, don't let my water mislead you. I actually try to get it to be flowy as much as possible. Uh, I will add one more thing to that. And that's again, that's a bit subjective. So the, the idea of temperatures. Right. So you can see here that I varied it. There is a bit of cools and a bit of warms. Yours is very warm dominated, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that if it was a conscious choice, right? But it's something to be a bit more aware of. Um, as for darkening, so one good thing is you're not scared to go dark, which a lot of people are. So the values are actually on point. Maybe I lighten up the back layer of the buildings. That's one thing that could be improved. Um, but but other than that, really on point. So that's good because a lot of people, that's where they're stuck, just going dark. Uh, this is one of my favorites, actually. So here, the front of the horse, you got the flow really well. All of the notes I said for earlier, you got it really nicely here. You got a really nice flow with the snow, with the ground and everything. Again, pay attention to that temperature because I do mix a lot of yellow. Yellow you do have here. You don't have as much of red. Um, and it will depend on, again, what you're, what you're what you try to achieve. And also because you work, Ruth came back. Uh, you know, because you're working from my impression, then of course it's going to be a little different. But really, really good job overall. I really like it. Um, maybe just a bit of improvement on the proportions and drawing, especially the midsection of the horse. You can see that it's a little more squeezed together, and you have this beautiful zigzag. So something to make sure not to lose the gesture, right? This is why I always recommend gesture drawing to really capture the shape properly. Uh, but a really, really good job overall. Uh, way to go. Uh, and let's take a break, quick break, and check out the chat, see what we have here. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Tim K, how are you doing? Saying Inky. Uh, yeah, that's a really, really nice effect. Uh, Butterfly is beautiful. All of these three are beautiful. Hey, Martha, how are you doing? I got here a little late, Martha. I don't remember. I think, okay, so Martha, I believe you sent them to me uh, maybe a day or two ago. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> uh, I believe, Martha, you sent me like a day or two ago, so yours didn't make it to this one. I don't know if they'll make it to the next one. We'll see by our pace today, but uh, but we'll see about that uh, soon, I believe, for everyone who sent them. Um, hey, Marita, how are you doing? Hope everything is going well with you. Hey, Nancy. Uh, oh, yeah, Nancy, you already joined earlier, I believe. Love this. Very fun paintings and constructive critiques. Yeah, thank you so much. Let me know if that helps and if you if you want me to uh, talk about an aspect that I don't, right? If I miss something, definitely uh, 
just if you refer to a painting, because it takes me sometimes uh, a few moments to get back to the chat, just tell me what painting or who the artist is. That will be great. Um, lots of beautiful works here. Uh, so let us continue onwards. We have Sujata here. Beautiful work. So a couple of interesting things that I find here. First off, you seem to paint very opaque, which I actually love. Um, I think it's an interesting take on watercolor, even though I'm not sure this could be gouache. Uh, I think it's an interesting take and one I'm not used to critiquing and judging. So take everything I say with a grain of salt, of course, um, because I just it's a technique I'm less familiar with. What I will say is that I love the opaque touches. So, for example, here in the grass, you get a lot of that variety with those opaque touches, which is really good. So one thing I will say in terms of the overall composition, try and you actually manage to do it in, in a section of the painting. So if you look at the top left corner of the painting, which I believe should be here, well, if you're looking at the screen, top left corner, look at all these trees and then their tops. The trees are very simple. It's just one brush mark, right? One line. And then their tops are more complex. You can see a lot of the leaves. That's the perfect balance to me, right? Because you have so much there in the treetop and the foliage, balancing it out with relatively simple tree trunks is actually a great achievement. I would like to see that for the entire painting, right? I hope that makes sense. If you can balance it out, so for example, maybe the road or maybe the foliage to the side, lighten up on some of the of the um, the sharpness of the shapes, have a few more vague areas. That can really put the balance properly there. Because right now I'm looking at it, I'm enjoying it, but I don't know what I'm supposed to focus on. The people at the end or, you know, whatever, right? It's a bit hard to tell. One in the middle, really like this one it's perfect the backdrop a little looser than the front that's the balance i'm looking for and i can really i don't know why unfortunately the image was a bit blurry um so it's it's a shame that it's this one in particular because there are a bit more details and faces so it could be cool to see it sharp you can send it over to me and i'll, I'll take a look of course regardless of you know uh, this critique but um i think the values are on point i think they're accurate one thing i would work on i think is just the drawing it's not bad, it's actually pretty good, but because you seem to have good control of the medium, uh, I would actually work on improving the drawing because I think that's where you can get a lot of more than just incremental growth. I think you can really take it to the next level if you improve the drawing a bit. Um, I can tell that also in the in, in the painting on the left uh, with the people especially. The people in the, in the middle are actually really good. Um, farther people are a little harder. Uh, but yeah, that's one thing that I would work on. Now, the one on the right, I love the colors. I love that strong green, blue, yellow. It's clear, right? The impression is clear that that uh, blind or, you know, um, I forgot, I always forget, curtain uh, is really good looking. You have a really neat balance where the outside is bright and the middle is a little more muted. I like that a lot. Uh, again, drawing, just improve the drawing a bit, I think. I like that this area at the, at the bottom um, where the um, where the actual, you know, the, the bed or whatever that is, sofa, uh, you went a little more vague, just like I said. That's the, I love that. So, yeah, great, great job overall. Again, this is a style and approach I'm not as familiar with on a technical level. So uh, hopefully I give you some good answers and some good directions. And here we have Supriya, and these are lovely. So... Uh, this is, uh, so you sent two, right? The portrait and this one. Yeah, I love these. Uh, one thing I have to say is you're accurate. Like the drawing is on point. Uh, even in the portrait, you're you're focused on lines, which is something I always tell people to avoid. So we'll talk about that in just a second. You're very line focused. Um, but in terms of like the accuracy of the drawing, it's really, really good. I love how you balance it out. So the background, by the way, I'm curious to hear the paper. Is it Hanemule? Because it reminds me of Hanemule texture, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the way you simplify the background, you merge all of this together. You even removed the buildings, which is a bold move. And I think I like it a lot. I think if you would put the buildings here, it would have a very stale composition of just this V in the middle. And it would, would not be as interesting. Uh, so I stand behind that decision 100%. Really good. Again, simplification in the background, just the people. Like the way this dude is just merging with the background is so clever. And a lot of people miss that. One thing you could do to improve it, you see this gap in the reference photo between the two people in the back. 
that like the stalls or whatever it is, like the flower stalls, they go back and there's like a gap between them we can see through. If you would have added it here, it would improve maybe the composition and sense of depth that it goes all the way back. So just a suggestion for you. Um, I love the highlights, the touches on, on of highlight uh, on the back, the opaque touches really, really good. Um, one thing I would tell you to improve is, and that's something that happens to me a lot. It seems like all of your darks are very blue and very, I, I don't know what blue it is. It could be ultramarine, it could be Prussian, it could be a lot of things, honestly. Um, <clears throat> just try and balance it out. In the reference photo, it's a little more gray. So I'm fine with cool and I recommended it before, but if you can have it be just a little bit more gray, uh, it'll, I think, put the, the painting in a much better balance. That's that's my thoughts. It's okay to go really blue in the distance, but something here and how that works together with the front doesn't completely compile for me. So another note. Now, two more notes about the drawing. That carriage is much bigger in the, in the photo. Maybe that was a deliberate change, but just notice your proportions if that's a mistake. Uh, and look at the shadow. So the shadow merges with the bottom. There's... There's this overlap that I like to avoid, and a lot of people call it like an unhealthy overlap, where maybe the edge of the shadow of the carriage it intersects perfectly with the bottom of the frame. And that's usually not recommended. It throws off the composition. So if you can bring it all an inch up and then have a bit of a light floor under it, just like this rest of the street, keep it light, that'll be good. Uh, but in terms of drawing, again, to go back to it, you're really on point. Like the lines of perspective, I can see them. You got the perspective very accurately here, which is really nice. You didn't do the mistake that most people make of making it feel like you're looking from above, but still drawing everything like it's from the same angle. Good job on that. Good job on interpreting this guy's pants too with that crease and the light. That's really, really good. Uh, now onto the portrait. All of the above, all of the previous advice um, works the same way, but I will say again, very focused on lines. So you actually drew the, the edge of the nose and the, the lines of the smile of the cheeks and the lips uh, and here especially. So if you look at, for example, here's a good spot to focus on, the chin, right? In your painting, the chin is much lighter than the neck. But if you look at, at the photo itself, there isn't that big of a difference. So this is what happens when we focus on lines and then you darken within the lines, but you don't tend enough to everything else. Now, I will give you that. That's a very tough photo to paint from because the light and shadow conditions just don't allow for a clear enough contrast in shapes. What I would do instead is use a photo that has direct sunlight so you can actually see the shapes of light and shadow, kind of like the previous one. This photo is perfect. Uh, this one, not so much, but I do appreciate that you actually went for it. And I should probably go for it more because I don't do enough of these styles, enough of, of, of light. Um, a little flatter light and shadow, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. It's just when you talk about the purpose of a painting, it makes it a little harder uh, when there isn't a clear pattern of light and shadow, right? So just for the beginning. And next way of preventing, let me see the chat and then we'll return to you. Um, oh, yeah, good, good. Stefania says, uh, thank you, Liron. Very useful. I'll try to follow even more of your suggestions. Perfect. It's so funny how sometimes, you know, you watch the videos and a lot of the suggestions I'm giving you right now is things I said probably hundreds of times in videos before. But just seeing the feedback in, as, as it pertains specifically to your painting can make that difference, you know. Uh, so yeah, hey Peter, how are you doing? Uh, speak about the need to keep it simple. These paintings are quite over. Yeah, a lot of this this is overwork. Um, it's very hard to avoid overwork, and I actually have a stash of paintings down here that I'm going to show you in an upcoming video. I'm just taking them all out. <laughs> it's very hard to avoid overwork. The one way I find it really helps me is to just have a plan, because when you know exactly this is the shape I'm going to paint, I'm, I'm going to use this value. I'm going to just like I've shown you in the last video from Saturday, right? The how to avoid overworking. You just know what you're going to paint and it, it will solve it for you. Um, YM says, I don't agree on overworked. I think it's just quite detailed. I love the one on the right. Uh, yeah, and I, it depends on which one we're talking about, right? Um, a lot of my paintings are overworked. It's just, it depends on how much you look at it and try and see it, right? Um, so yeah, a lot of these are overworked, but Again, it depends on, on the goal, also the stylistic choice, I guess. Uh, 
So it's supposed to be probably an emoji of <coughs> like this. Uh, Joanne, how are you doing? Late to the party? No worries. We're just getting started. Uh, Megan says, wow, I love the sh uh, sheer curtain. Red impression. Yeah, it's so good. With the light coming from the back. John says, I like what you did with the stone uh, walkway. Oh, yeah, that's that's really good. I like that, too. Or are you, are you talking about the... Um, the one with the trees or the one with the cityscape? I'm not sure. Uh, Dai Junwei Watercolor. Hi, Lerard. How are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, let me just check something here real quick. Uh, is it still sharing the screen? Hopefully it does. Uh, let's see. Because I thought I lost it for a second there. Yeah, okay. We're good. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. I hope you're doing well, too. Your, your art is just fantastic. Everyone should check it out for sure. Um, actually, maybe I'll link to um, maybe I'll link to it. Uh, you should probably check the the um, painting masters episode I did uh, on uh, Dai Junwei Dai, Jun, Dai Junwei's uh, work. It's really good. Well, let me let me just share it. I'm going to share a link. It's amazing that you're here. Thank you so much. I was like, oh, surprise! Uh, painting masters. I hope you're doing super well too. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll review in just a second. I want to make sure I get the right link. Here we go. Yes, yes. So, so good. I love your work. Uh, okay, Isabella. Uh, I thought about this first painting, meaning Ukrainian flag. Oh, really? I, I, that's So a lot of people see it in, in that one. So I guess it works. Uh, Stefania says the boy was uh, struggling. Oh, wait, which one are you talking about? Let me see here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's. But you know what? What's good about it is that it is all of the shadows are consolidated in one spot. Uh, so try and redo that one. I'm sure you'll do a good job. Um, just maybe a matter of one more attempt. I've painted it ten times probably and have five of, of it, which are like finished paintings, you know. Uh, so yeah. Um, Lollipop strawberry says, "Hey everyone, sorry I'm late." Yeah, no worries. Uh, what what did I miss? Uh, Quite a bit, but it's okay. It's okay. You'll you'll get caught up, and then you can watch it again. That's my message. Then you can watch it again after the fact. And uh, it's funny. It says, and the horse I added the tail because I understand the body was dif uh, different. Um, let me see here. Not have to remember everything. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. You moved it. Yep. No, it's cool. It's cool. It's it's okay to make changes. Uh, so let's move on to Triveni. And again, let me know your thoughts, and we'll continue. Uh, looking uh, at the chat in just a second. Um, I love this one. When I saw it, I was like, whoa, that's super cool. Uh, so here's what I will say. It's kind of a similar to what we said earlier, similar advice. Uh, one thing you want to pay attention to is that idea of overworking the details. So the feathers, I love how you approach them. If I look at every section individually, when you put them all together, and that's really hard to get that control with the blues and the oranges and reds. Uh, when I look at them all together, I would have wished for maybe one of the areas to be a little more simplified, right? Like the front. You can tell that the shadow really leads it. Everything in the front is shadow. And remember what I told you about local color. I don't paint as much of the local color as I as I do the light and shadow pattern. So that's my focus always. So uh, from the this thing that I always forget what it's called and then down the middle, it's all dark shadow. Even the orange and blue, they're very similar value. There is a mild difference, of course, but it's similar. So one is an eight and one is a seven or something like one's a nine, one's an eight. Um, and there is quite a lot of similarity in it. So pay attention to that. You can actually fix that just by putting another wash that will darken them together. Uh, but talking about the details, I love the blue. This blue here is in the middle. It's so good looking. I love that, that right here. Um, so the front could be balanced out by being smoother, okay, by getting more flow. Now, this could be also just trying to get it smoother and, and failing to do that, because um, I do see some areas that could be smoother in the background. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to give you some more high-level advice that I think to work on, because the drawing is good. It's close enough, right? Uh, I think that's okay. Uh, there isn't much to fix there. The overall composition, if you look at the background, you used very strong greens. What this tends to do is make it jump towards us. If you want that sense of depth, go a little, uh, go a little more muted, more neutralized. So you see the trees in the background. If you compared it to, again, if you did it on purpose, perfect. But the trees in the background are really, um, they have a lot of red in the green. The green is quite muted, and you didn't really capture that. 
Um, so yeah, that's one more thing to improve, I guess. Uh, now they are darker, but that would be like a compositional decision. So if you want them to contrast with their roos roosters, that's what it's called, right? Um, the tail, for example, you did it quite dark. So I actually prefer the background to be light, right? But if you look at the reference photo, the tail is light, so the background is dark. So it complements it. Uh, so that's more of a, a matter of uh, decision, right? Now look at the feet, could be darker, right? So you missed some of the shadows in it. That's something I want you to focus on, the shadows, okay? Uh, Zhao Zuo, from the last time you actually sent them to me a long time ago, so I'm happy I could finally uh, include you. Uh, first one, Statue of Liberty. Great flow, I love that. Great job on the background, too. So you can hold an even wash very well, which is very important. Here's what I would work on. So notice how the way you approach the shadows really flatten them to a light blue and a dark blue. Now, I'd like to challenge you on that. When you look at the shadows around the armpit, right, around the, all the folds and creases, they're actually quite green and quite strong. So try and include in your shadows both that strong color and then as it goes into a black or a dark color, then you can mute it. But including a, a, at least a bit of that can really help, okay? Now, in terms of all the mistakes that I talked about so far of other people, you didn't make those. Your shadows are actually unified and simplified, which I love. So all you have to do now is just improve how you structure the actual shadow. Like you could do so much more if you use color in the shadows. So let me refer you to a really good video, I think, that will help you with that. Um, and that is the one I did on the uh, portrait sculpture. It's a recent one, maybe you saw it. Sculpture, you're wrong. It's very hard to type while I'm talking. <laughs> well, the uh, watercolor, while I'm, while I'm uh, yeah, let's see here. Um, no, I don't know why it's like I always fail to find this one video because I talk about colors there. What do I talk about? I have to send it, and you've probably seen it because it's really new. Let me just find it off the channel. Because for anyone who has this, if your feelings, if your feelings, if your paintings feel like that, like what you're seeing now, the one video that I think is super useful in addressing that, of course, it's my video, so I'm always biased, but it's this one. Uh, f let me call this for richer shadows, for richer shadows. So that's the one I would recommend to watch. Okay, it's in the chat. Uh, that's the one with the sculpture port with the, the variance in the blues and, and yellows. There's a lot that can uh, help you there. Okay, a really good job. You, you have moved past some of the stumbling blocks of other people. Now, one more thing I will say, unify more. So you see this, this part of the sleeve, right? And it's like that. A lot of it is just one shadow. Uh, there's a big overarching pattern of shadow, connected shadow, connected shadow. And you lost that. You have a lot of individual lines. Connect them. There's a big shadow of sh a shape of shadow there. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, here's your second one, which I remember. That's really cool. So, I'm not sure why there's a flying pig here. And someone can tell me what the reference is or where this is from. I'm not sure. But if I were to judge it uh, on the merit of the painting, of course, um, I like a lot about it. One thing I will say, as it, as it relates to values, you have some areas where you capture the values really well. So that would be the front. These sheds in the front with the lines running on top of them, that's perfect. I love that. And then those, I don't know, roads or whatever that is, curves. The sky, which is one of the biggest shapes here, could all be darker. And that will make those, um, what do you call those huge chimneys or the, whatever, the air pollution thing will make it much um, lighter and make it pop more. Now, I understand that you may fear, and every, I fear it too, that you lose the contrast with the darks on below in the building, but you could go a, a, a one level darker. Um, and flow, right? The sky is very patchy. So that's something to work on. Put a very dark blue and then do the clouds wet and wet and you will be able to avoid that. That's actually a really interesting uh, scene. Not an easy one too. Um, what I would do is really take a few steps back physically and see the overarching shapes. You did that very well because you unified all of the details on the left. 
you unified all of the, the shadows on the building. The, the last one step is to really take care of these big shapes, make sure there's a good flow in them, like the sky. Okay. Hope it makes sense. Next, we have Alessandro. Uh, I'm not sure you're here. I haven't seen a message from you, but hopefully you'll get to see this. Let me see who's in the chat. Local color. Okay. Uh, local color is when you look at this AirPod case. You have red, you have yellow, correct? Now look at what happens when I turn off the light that comes from the front. The whole thing got darker, okay? The whole thing is much more affected by light and shadow than it is by the actual colors. So if you try and... Let me give you the perfect example. You know what? I have this painting here. I have this painting here, right? And there is a lot of colors in it, right? You have the green and the blue and the reds and everything. But look at what happens if I turn it away from the light. If you were to paint this painting, let me go full screen here for a second. If you were to paint this painting, you better darken this entire thing. The shadow takes precedence over what color is there, right? You could use the same colors that are there and then glaze on top of it a shadow. But look at how dark it is compared to the top, right? The top is light because it faces the light that comes from above. And the bottom is dark. You better use very dark colors before you even think about what paints are there. And let me take a few steps back. Do you even care what paint is there? No, because shadow and light for that matter, light and shadow takes precedence over the local color. Only when everything is exposed to the light do we get to see the individual local colors? That's the point. That's the point I was making. So I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure what Waddle is, Martha, but uh, yeah. Henny says, uh, hopping in mid work day. Oh, yeah, we'll keep quiet. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Elsa, how are you doing? Rooster legs are not that long. <clears throat> the white vertical line is making it look anatomically incorrect. Yeah, I haven't noticed that actually, but. Hmm. You know what? I don't think it's that significant. That's not the first thing I would work on. But yeah, it's possible that it's inaccurate. Um, one big thing for me is to like give the most useful critique. It's very hard sometimes to do that. Uh, it's very hard to to dilute, dilute distill the, the actual thing that the people need. So yeah. Uh, Monica says, what blue is it called? Oh, I wonder. Uh, sorry, I've got to go. Bye bye. All nice. Uh, we'll see you. I'll see you in a future live stream. Maybe you'll watch the rest later on. Hey, Mandy, how are you doing? Hey, Lauren, sorry, joining late. Thank you so much for the extremely helpful comments on my painting. Uh, and thank you for fitting it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I was looking forward to it because it's you sent it to me a while back, but I had to push it into this group. So, yeah, thank you so much for submitting. White Reza, funny to notice that in such bright scene, the shadows are actually more saturated than the parts in sunlight. Yeah, that's a rare occurrence too, by the way. Uh -huh. Yeah. Taco, ah, I got it. Thanks. Perfect. Uh, John says, I've been enjoying all of these paintings, so many unique points of view. Yeah, it's definitely interesting seeing everyone's impression. And I think the more you work and improve, your impression becomes more you, you know? Uh, Christine says, um, Wowzer, shadow light over color. Aha moment. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I, I'm happy it helps. Uh, James, I think this is a uh, Battersea Power Station London. Oh, okay. Let me see what that is. Battersea Power Station. But I wonder, yeah, it looks like it, but I wonder what the pig is. Why is there a floating pig there? I'm not sure. Oh, there's actually a floating pig. Okay. There's actually like a floater thing. Pig. Oh, okay, it's actually there. Huh. Pink Floyd is his name. I had no idea. That's so funny. Okay, I'll I'll read about it later because now I'm curious. Uh, but yeah, great catch, James. Thank you for uh, yeah. I think the pig is a reference to Pink Floyd and Flash. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Okay, doc. Uh, and by the way, yeah, I think uh, Watercolor Ninja. It's your uh, reference photo. I think you sent it to me late, and then I I forgot that I sh that I needed to incorporate it so sorry with the dog which is really nice uh maybe next time but i will show the painting of course uh so yeah let's move on we have a lot to go through 
Looks like we're about halfway through, which is good because we're 50 minutes into the live stream and I'm super tired. So we'll have to be on time. So Alessandro, great job. I love so much about this. And it seems like, I'm not sure if you uh, used two reference photos because you included two. So maybe you used one for the seal and then one for the waves, which is really great. Uh, that's something uh, it's not easy to do. And I sometimes try to combine them reference photos and it's, it's definitely a challenge. So here's what I will say. Um, there is the, and I got something in my eye, there is the idea of clarity of values and the smoothness, right? The sense a little overworked. So I would much rather sing a bit of um, um, in a more uh, even wash there and definitely not the patchiness around the seal, but that's technique. You'll get to work on it. One thing that is inaccurate is, so, and this is a lot of people have that tendency. So you see the, the shoreline. Let me see how you see it here. So the shoreline goes like this, right? And we talked about it a lot in the previous live stream. Maybe that's the angle, a bit like diagonal, but then you went and increased that angle. And what this does, it gives off the feeling that we're looking at the scene more from above. So that's something definitely to watch out for. Lines tend to be much flatter as they move away from us or, or you know, depending on our angle. That thing just won't leave my eye. It's really annoying. Give me a second. Okay. Maybe it left now. Worst case, I'll go wash my face. So you see it's very, there is this tendency to go like this, diagonal. Though, keep it flat. It's very flat. All of these shapes are flat. Um, and you can actually see this maybe how the... It's hard to see it in terms of where it intersects with the edge of paper because you change the composition. Uh, so we had clarity of values, clarity of washes, make them flow more. And that that diagonal is exaggerated. That angle, fix it, and it will really put that... Like, I would do even more than that. So when you look at the seal's uh, head, notice how, and again, that's that intersection, that unhealthy intersection. The, the shoreline is like this, and the seal's head is, like, is here. It touches it. Why not have it go above it or below it, right? But don't have it like this, because that's a weird intersection. I'd much rather it goes pokes above. So by flattening and lowering the horizon line, you can achieve that. Because right now, it looks like you took a picture from a higher angle, but painted the seal from the correct angle. So you actually drew the seal in the right angle, but everything else looks from above, which makes a bit of a dissonance. So that's the main thing for you, I think. Now here we have Carla, uh, and just beautiful, beautiful work. Um, so for the for this center one, honestly, I won't have much to improve. Uh, let me see. Can you see me? Yeah, good. Because I just I'm I'm sitting way back on my chair. Uh, the middle one is so good. I wouldn't change a thing, honestly. Um, maybe, you know what could be interesting? And I would have never thought of it just spontaneously. Here's one thing I would ch consider changing, and it depends on the reference photo. So you have this road, right? And I assume either people walk in this road or maybe cars go in it or maybe bicycle. It could be cool to show the shape of the surface of the road, and I'm being very nitpicky because it's so good, to show the surface of the road by playing around with the shadow. So instead of having the cast shadows just long flat lines, by giving them bumps or valleys, you can um, you can uh, portray like a car's colises, you call it, like the marks that they leave, the tire marks. You can portray them by dipping down, right? A bit. Now, maybe it wasn't there in the original reference photo, but I think that could look really cool. So I'm nitpicking because it's so good. The sky's on point. The trees are on point. Anyone who has trouble rendering trees, here you go. Simplify them. Maybe a few scratches here and there, but they're just one big shape, right? Um, you could say maybe that some of the snowy areas, the snowy, the foliage areas are a little overworked on the left side, but who cares? You know, that's so good. I love that. I love it, and I was nitpicky on purpose. Um, as for the other ones, let's start with this one. Or let's start with this one, actually. Drawing is accurate, which I love. One thing I'm missing is that whole fence thing, a bit of clarity in its shape. Because right now, I don't know why this is white behind it. There's a lot of white spots where the sand isn't as felt there. I would imagine that the sand is also a little darker, though I can't tell much without a reference photo. But I would love some clarity on that. You want blue on it, which is cool. It's like in the shadow. 
but maybe a bit more clarity in the light and shadow and the sh the, the foliage behind it maybe darkens what's behind it right so that's one thing i would think about without seeing the reference i couldn't say much more uh, i love to see i think it looks good your skies are on point too very good job very good job carla and this one here on the left great work on the that tree in the middle really showing the sunlight through it the foliage down below really really neat one thing i'm missing maybe is the same thing like express the shape of the ground with the shadow use the the shadow here's one tip i learned okay the shape of a cast shadow is a really good tool to showing the shape of the surface on which it casts so what do i mean by that i can show you here is my let me turn myself full screen here's my hand here's a finger that casts a shadow from the light that's coming from the front right so or maybe how shall i describe it i want i want you to really be able to see this so if i put a pencil i'm just trying to figure out like the angle for you to be able to see this i don't know how to convey it to you uh, i need a stronger light to maybe here it will be visible i don't know no it doesn't matter so you can imagine so when you see let's say there's something here that casts a shadow on my fingers right so the shadow is cast that oh you can actually see it like this okay i should have thought of that look at the shadow right now on my fingers i know it's hard to tell but can you see how it follows their shape it goes up and down hills and valleys a cast shadow is a great tool in conveying the surface on which it is cast and i heard this tip from stan prokopenko proko when you paint or draw a cast shadow don't think about the shape of the thing that's casting it Think of the surface. So for these trees, right away, let me share my screen again. For these trees, the, the hill down below, I want to see the shape of the hill using the cast shadow that casts towards us. Maybe a bit more roundedness to it, right? Don't just use a straight line. Go a bit around. Indicate that it's a hill, right? It's going uphill. Or maybe if it's a flat surface, have it flatter. But, but just do something with it. To me, it looks like a hill. To me, it looks like we're looking uphill. So have something with that. It's very subtle, but I think it will serve you well. And if you if you need uh, more tips on that, I can show you on a piece of paper. But I think I think it's pretty clear. Hopefully, it's clear. Now we have Cherico. Uh, uh, thank you so much for sending these to me. I just wrote Cherico. I know your first name, but I wasn't sure because uh, that's what the email showed. So I said I'll keep it this way. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. You're also <coughs> a recent Patreon patron supporters so thank you so much uh the left one i can't ignore it that's me which is super funny so you, and you can see down below from the photo gallery of the phone i censored the rest but you can see the reference photo that's me in the exact same pose as i am right now actually like this it's, i do that a lot um <clears throat> so yeah that's so funny it's so good like on the one hand the the technique could be improved the flow could be better but the, the shapes are so on point. It looks just like me. And I recognize it at first glance. That's my nose. Really good job on that one. I honestly don't know what to improve. Maybe just the flow. Use more water in your wash to have it flow better. That's pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> I'd love to see more variety in temperatures. But, you know, that's my face. So I can't complain too much. Uh, the middle one. Very uh, imaginative. I love that. I would love to see the reference for that. Again, without the reference, I can't say much. Um, but I love it. One thing that could improve it greatly, and I really wonder if that's the right advice here, because I really like that tree in the back. So here's my, here's the way my thought process works. I love the tree in the back. I love the pattern of light and shadow. But for the life of me, I can't make out the turkey. It really, it's too messy with the tree at the back. So here are your options. Keep the tree the same, but where it goes behind the turkey, lighten it up and flatten it like you did maybe with the farthest most tree branches on the right. You did that, right? It's the front ones that are a little more uh, distinct. Uh, maybe flatten the entire right side of that tree just to have the turkey or bird, whatever that is, be pop more, right? One more thing you can do, and you can do this now actually, is just add a gap with opaque paint so where the turkey meets the tree you can draw like an outline around it a light outline and make it pop a bit right these are some options i'm throwing at you because i really like that tree 
and I wouldn't want to see it gone. I, I just want the turkey to be more distinct against it. Okay, so these are the kinds of, and, and by the way, the tail does it really well. The tail does distinguish it from the tree, but I'm missing something on the right side. I can barely make out the head. Uh, I would love to see maybe some highlights under it or something just to bring it out a bit. You know, that's the kind of thing I think about when I paint, really trying to figure out what will make the overall thing read well. And it's a very advanced thing. It's something that's hard to do. I'm not a master of it by any stretch. Uh, so just some thoughts to throw at you. But the way you painted that tree in the back, especially the light and shadow is so good. And if you're here, if you're watching, send me the reference. I'm actually curious to see it. Uh, okay. Uh, now, as for the portrait on the right side, I have a feeling you captured the expression really well. Again, without a reference, I cannot say much. I would have wanted to see a bit more colors here. Per just my personal kind of taste, uh, a bit more pinks and stronger reds, and maybe a little stronger blues in the shadowy areas, okay? Um, I don't feel like there's a strong, like, coarse shadow here. There isn't a strong light and shadow coming from anywhere, so I wouldn't comment on that, but that's one of the things that stand out. The hair could be a little less worked, especially these curls to the right. Just simplify them into one shape. See if you can do that. Challenge yourself. You actually did that in my painting. Uh, I think you simplified the hair a bit more. Great job overall. I really, really love this. Great, great job. Uh, next up, we have Henny. So we'll get to you in just one second. Let me go back and uh, see what the chat is saying. I'm going to slow down my speaking because <laughs> my voice will get tired otherwise. Um, uh, yeah, we got that. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, James, for letting me know about the pig. We have N. It says impressive. Uh, how long has Carla been painting? Carla, you can comment on that. Uh, I'd be curious to know too. Uh, John says the middle picture has perfect watercolor colors. Yeah, definitely. That was so good that uh, I assume you referred to. Wait, did we go this far? No, where, where was it? Down here. Yeah, that's like perfect. I love that. We'll get to the rest here. We're with Hanny now. Uh, Banani Kovani, how are you doing? Uh, way too late now. It's okay. And I will, I don't remember if you sent me once for this uh, critique. We'll see. Maybe we'll do some of your paintings too. Uh, and Monica says, sorry, must go. Have a blessed day. You too. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, John says, this live video is amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. And if you want yours critiqued, uh, I have a banner here that states clearly, want yours critiqued, email it to me, Liron at Liron Yan. Cannot guarantee when it will be, uh, because it will take me time to get through all of the um, submissions. Uh, but I promise it will happen in a future video. And it is time to give a plug to the new Patreon uh, critique tier. Uh, if you want your, I have a sneeze coming up in just a second. Yeah, okay, we're good. Um, if you want me to critique your paintings one-on-one, -on -one, uh, thank you, Hank did one with me, and it was, I think, pretty good. Um, uh, be sure to check it out. I will put the link in the description box. Um, if you want to join that tier, it's a monthly 30-minute call where uh, I critique your paintings in particular, give you advice, maybe even do a quick demo showing you what I would improve. And I think it's really for people who are spending a lot of time painting. Like, If you don't practice a lot, I think you should practice first, right? Um, I think it will be a not the best use of your time and money too. Uh, but if you do practice a lot and you feel stuck, that could be your way out. Okay, that's something that you may want to uh, check out. So thank you so, so much for that if you check it out. And also if you can drop a like on the live stream, it really helps me. Uh, and with that, uh, we can go back to the chat and then move on to some more paintings. Now YM, uh, I love uh, this one. And yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, we'll get to it in just one second. Ch uh, Chuck, how are you, my friend? Good morning, everyone. How are y'all? How are you doing? I'm curious to hear, too. Christine also asks, uh, hey, Vance, how are you doing? Uh, YM says the composition is great. The color of the lake, great highlight. Um, okay, let's continue. Let's continue, and then we'll we'll uh, get to it. Uh, Chuck, give me an update on how you're doing. I, didn't, I don't remember seeing an email, but if I missed one, my apologies. Uh, so, Hanny. Really, really good. So when I talk about freshness in washes, that's what I'm talking about. That is just super fresh. And you can see the flow. That's what I'm after, right? 
everything here works super well. I'm actually curious to hear how you practice on a regular basis, how much and how. Like, do you work from tutorials a lot? Do you? Because maybe you told me back then, but I don't remember when we talked uh, via email. But I can definitely see our improvement too from the last time uh, in the last couple of paintings I've seen. So yeah, this composition has thought and planning when it comes to the overall shapes, which is the thing that should take precedence over the details, which is why it works so well. Even the mountains in the background, I can tell that you worked on the shadows really carefully uh, and connected them, not just with like, there's maybe snow, maybe something else, but the shadows connect with the local color. So you painted both the shadow and the dark areas of the mountain, whether it's dark because of the ground or trees, you connected them and that works really, really well. That diagonal shadow in the foreground works super well. I love that you put some opaque paint within the shadows to bring out the feeling of a, of a road or highway. One thing I would tell you, and that mountain on the left in the background is really, really good too. One thing that maybe I'm missing, but it's a matter of taste more than anything else because everything works really well here. I'm missing, and you could, okay, <clears throat> no matter what the painting is, you'll find a focal point. That's the thing that, that some people don't get, and I, I and I didn't explain enough. People always wonder, like, how do I know what the focal point is, or how do I make, I make sure there is a strong focal point? A lot of it is like you just paint what you want to paint. People will find the focal point. That's that's on the viewer, right? You can guide them in the right direction, but at the end of the day, they will see what they want to see. So how it relates to here. What I'm missing, and it could 100% be just me, my personal taste, my personal, the things I like to see in a painting, is maybe another focal point. Maybe... Do you see how the diagonal shadow, and then you move into the distance, and you have this gap in the road that's in the light, right? And then again, shadow. In that well-lit area, you could put a car, for example, and have its cast shadow. And that could really tie it up together, you know? And it will, now, maybe you don't want to show cars. Maybe you just want it to be the view. But I would argue if you put the road there, you're already not just necessarily doing a natural view. Right. So maybe just putting a car or even like a cyclist or a bunch of cars also could work. But just something there to capture that light and indicate it with a shadow could really enhance the composition. Now, if you want the focal point to be the mountains and maybe that body of water, the lake, by all means, avoid what I just said. Right. So it is a lot of it is a matter of, of personal choice. This could also be a good opportunity, though, to put some strongly saturated color. Right now, I think the most saturated color is that blue in the water, which is very clever, by the way. Uh, it could be an opportunity to put more. But again, that's 100% my opinion. This is perfect. I, I wouldn't change it, actually. What I described it, had I been the one to paint it, that's what I would. But given that's the painting, I would not change it. I would not do it any other way. I love it. Good job. Perfect. Really perfect. So... If you were to ask me what would you improve, based on the painting, just to give you kind of a, 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 a preview to what a one-on-one -on -one session could look like. If you were to ask me what should I improve, based on just seeing the painting, I would say nothing. Just keep painting. But what I would do is ask you, what do you maybe not like as much about your work? What do you want to achieve that you currently don't achieve? That's, I have to ask these questions. And by the way, feel free to say that, Hanny, because that will um, that will help us move forward with this if you do want to get more than what I just suggested, right? That would be the thing I would be curious about because based on the artwork alone, I love it. I wouldn't want you to change it. It's you, it's unique, it's it's your style, you know? So that's my, my kind of approach to this. What would you want to improve? And then I can bounce off of that and tell you, oh, okay, so now I recognize in the painting you could do one, two, three right? But overall, I wouldn't change a lot. You know, that's just really, really pretty. Um, so let's see here. We're going to move forward. Uh, Ashikin says, I love how the mountain looks. Uh, I usually overwork and put too much paint. Yeah, think uh, Ashikin in, in simple shapes, just like Henny did here. Capture that overall shape. Forget about the details and the trees. That can come later. Really look at the pattern of light and shadow. That's what I think, at least. Um, 
Yeah, and Iruda says also I'll put a car at the bottom uh, left. I would actually put it in the lower third right. I don't know why. I'll put it there in the where the the road has a light on it to the right. Maybe I'd have the shadow. And one thing to remember: when the shadow casts, it feels like there's a bump to the right of the road, like there's a little hill. Take that into consideration with the cast shadow. One more thing it relates to the point from earlier. Um, Chuck says, still recovering from the cancer and treatment. Immune system is shot. Have to be very careful. Thanks for asking. Yeah, definitely. And um, we're so we're so proud of you for going through this and actually beating uh, beating cancer. So now it's all about the the be even more selfish and take care of your health and yourself. Uh, we're all rooting for you. Um, so yeah, Handy says, love the additional suggestion. Waiting for your Saturday vid to learn how to paint cars. Thanks everyone. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a fun one. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Chuck, I'd love to walk down that road with my fishing pole. Uh, what kind of fish do you put in the lake? That's a great question. And that shows that this painting works. When someone can imagine themselves in the painting, that's what I love to hear usually. Uh, so you say it was just some finer details I thought it missed, but your suggestion of a car is perfect addition, I think. And yes, I need to incorporate more of the focal point of a focal point. Yeah. So uh, I would say this very carefully, right? Because the focal point is, it could be the mountain, it could be the water. I do have a strong lead in. I feel like the road really leads me into the painting. So it's just a suggestion again for your consideration. I wouldn't, it doesn't, the painting doesn't need anything. That's when I know the painting is done because it doesn't need anything. One thing I think a lot of the previous paintings uh, and people that, that we've shown could learn from this one is that idea of flow, right? Mix enough in advance, use wet enough paint, have the paper at an angle so that you don't get a patchiness. Right, you get the flow because this is really flowy. You can tell. Uh, so yeah, uh, lake trout. That's what you want, right? So yeah, Handy will will hook you up with lake trout. I'm sure. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Let's see what we have. Oh, okay, Ian. Yes, uh, watercolor ninja. So this one I forgot. I had to reference. My apologies. Uh, all I can say to anyone to anyone who's watching and can see the reference. It is very much alike. So be sure to check out the at Watercolor Ninja on Instagram. Now, you shared this one, I believe, also on Discord, right? And you got some good feedback there. Um, I love it. I wouldn't change much, honestly. The one thing that stood out to me, you, so you went for a scheme that's very interesting. You went for orange and yellow, uh, uh, orange and purple, or yellow, slightly yellow, orangey and purple which are great complementaries. Um, you did one more clever thing, which I think is really, like, it's very easy to miss. You used a saturated yellow and a more muted purple, which is a great way of creating harmony. Um, so that's like the uh, complementary colors, and then one of them is more saturated than the other. You see this a lot with green and red um, complementing each other in paintings. Uh, that purple and uh, yellow works really well in that regard. Here's what I would say. So you already have two of the secondary colors. And that's, by the way, this, what I'm going to say now, is 100% a thing you can only figure out after you paint it. I would have never thought about that in advance had I been the one to paint this. I would probably do it very similarly. So here's the thing. You used purple. You used yellow or orange. Why not include a bit of green? And the green could be very subtle. And what do I mean by that? On the shadows and in some areas of the face, just a touch of green could give it a lot of life. And if you notice, a lot of faces, depending on the light and shadow conditions, have green in them. If you look at some of the, like uh, Misselbu on YouTube, who does beautiful, super realistic, watercolor portraits that have flow, they have everything. It's the perfect painting, in my opinion. He has a lot of greens and green nuances within the uh, the, sh the shadows, uh, or and even not the shadows, even the highlights. Uh, Jung Hong Sung does the same thing, and he actually has a lot of full videos you can watch. Green actually exists. It's reflected. If you look at my face right now, my beard has a bit of a very light beard. It has a bit of that in it, too, if I'm not mistaken. Let me put myself full screen here really see it up close. See, that's a bit of a greenish tint here. See? So you can include that too. And then you... So right now, you don't have... Let me think. So you, you have the blue. 
you have the yellow, you have the red, so you have all primary colors. So yeah, you're just missing kind of one mix. So just a suggestion, something to try out, maybe give it a bit more life, a bit more, but I'm the last one to, I'm the, will be the last one to tell you that the color is really that important, you know? So just, again, take it with a grain of salt, but hopefully that helps. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, Alexander says with a bird. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of. I never think about birds. Uh, YM says, "Oh, I got a BD dog. Yeah, that's hilarious." By the way, YM, what's your uh, profile pic? That's an anime or something else? I'm trying to. I'm having a hard time saying. If you can let me know, I'm curious. It looks a lot like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in terms of the body proportions because they usually have huge bodies. I'm curious to hear. Uh, let me know. Yeah, uh, Erica says, "Great painting with the stocking cap on the foot." Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, uh, hey, yeah, you're here. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. You got it. And honestly, like, it's it's so good. I wouldn't change much. You know, one more thing you can consider doing is instead of having a light background, thank you, Ruth sees the dog and she barks. You could try, maybe experiment with another iteration with a dark background. Just for fun, just to see how it works. If I recall, there is a bit of a shadow behind the dog, right? But I'm not sure. Uh, Chuck says, I love these paintings. Great job, everybody. Makes me feel good to see them. Uh, that will brush out of your beard. <laughs> what do you mean? But I'm not sure. Uh, YM says, yes, the profile is old. Oh, so I got it. Nice. I can barely see it from here. I see it's super small thumbnail, but you say it's Joseph from JoJo's. So yeah, I read the first volume of the manga and then I, I quit. I should continue. They didn't have it in the library and I lost momentum. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. Yeah, I, I can't believe I nailed it just based on the proportions. It's so funny because uh, I never really watched it properly. Great job, Ian, at Watercolor Ninja. Instagram, check it out. Let us continue to join. Join Burns. So you're here, right? I remember I saw your message earlier. One thing I will say, and and asks about the whiskers where they stretched in. They actually look like opaque paint to me, right? Let me know if I'm uh, mistaken. Um but yeah, so uh, join. I don't know why the photo was super low res and I didn't make it in time to talk to you about that. So sorry about that uh, to you and uh, just generally. Uh, but I love it. You know, it reminds me of a mix of uh, a couple of artists. I forgot their names. I had them in mind, but I forgot them where you put a bit of everything, like you put a bit of darks, a bit of lights, and then you use an overarching wash to connect them together. So funny enough, this is a great example of a painting that flows. All the things I said to previous people beforehand about flow and maintaining flow, this one has it. So it's a more abstract composition, right? I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It looks like kind of a landscape. Could it be snow? Could it be, um, could it be even um, like uh, an Arctic kind of a thing? right? And, and it doesn't matter as much. It, I love this. And it has flow. That's the main thing. Now, notice one more thing. This is super funny to, to comment on, but remember the comment about everything being a little more horizontal because of the angle and things get squeezed and it's a, a tendency of ours to make them more diagonal. Look at all the lines here. Look at the general kind of direction. It's all very horizontal. So that reads really well. So great job. Great job on that. And again, if you want to go for a more realistic uh, or more detailed approach, we can talk about that. I, we can do back and forth. But let me know in the comments if there's something you want to, to improve. I wonder, because to me, that's perfect. And it's not the style of, of me personally. So it's a bit hard for me to say, oh, do this, do that. I love it. In terms of just the fundamentals, I think it has, you know what? I would bring the dark section up close a little up so that because it's a very strong um point that attracts me like i look at it because it's dark i bring it a little up so that it doesn't pull me to the edge of the painting that's maybe one thing i would do in terms of fundamentals color harmony is great maybe you want to incorporate a an even stronger saturated uh area that pulls you in like so there's the dark area here around the bottom left then there's the thin line upper uh, above that I would actually maybe put next to the dark like a yellow or something that will melt together with it, wet and wet, and bring some more attention to that. Because that black and yellow would be very like capturing of, of, of the viewer's attention. So a couple of suggestions to throw at you. Again, this is perfect. I wouldn't change a thing, actually. 
let us continue to Kiran. So Kiran sent me a few sketches. Um, there's a lot to say here, but I will say a couple of things. So when you're doing sketches, of course, drawing becomes more important. Now, you remind me a lot of my sketches earlier on. You do have the touch for it. Let me scroll a bit and show you all of them. I can definitely tell that you can draw from observation. So I would actually encourage you to improve your drawing skills a bit more. So what do I mean by that? You can become so much better if you put more emphasis on the fundamentals of drawing. Structure, gesture, You'll your shapes will become much more effective and you'll be able to capture the essence of the shapes by working more on gestures, putting a lot of hard work into gestures, filling in sketchbooks with gestures, and then also structure. Again, do watch the three video series I did on uh, boxes and cylinders, especially because the arms are a cylinder. You will get much more depth in your drawings. Okay, shadow can come later on. I think if we're talking about shadow, you did the best job actually on the middle one. The middle one feels to me the most balanced in terms of light and shadow. Um, and I love, I love how you use just uh, newspaper cuts. That's really that's really cool. I I used to do that a lot. Um, when I was younger, actually, when I was a kid and I would draw, I would draw from the newspaper, I'll rip stuff out and draw them. Um, hair, again, overworked, a bit overworked, too much focus on lines. Look at the hair as one object that has flow to it and unify those shadows. There's no need to indicate every single hair, but that's later, that's for shading. I would focus on gestures and structure. These are the two things that will bring you forward the most. And I think for you, it's extra important because um, because you do have that. It's like me, like like I was. I had that drawing from observation. If your drawings would have been completely horrible, I would say, okay, let's maybe use tracing or something else and focus on painting or focus on whatever, right? But they're good. They're, you're on the right track. So I would want more, more of that, okay? You can do so much more. Like, for example, this guy here, look at the, the gesture. The movement is like, it, it's his entire shape is like two lines that are parallel but curvy and you missed that you made it you made it just flat two lines that are flat you missed that curve i hope that makes sense let me see how you're seeing it okay so right, it goes like this right something like that so he is actually curved like this there's a very subtle gesture there and you flattened it to two straight lines you lost a lot of the movement that's why i want you to focus on that Okay, you will grow a lot by focusing on gestures and structure. Now, let me sneeze one more time. I feel it coming. I don't know why I'm sneezing so much. I've done. I feel really well. I don't. I don't feel sick at all, except for my eye that's annoying me. Uh, but in any case, yeah. Let's let's go over some chats, and then we'll get to Lisa. And I wrote this down. First oil ever, because you mentioned it started painting during lockdown, which is amazing work, considering that, and it's just good work, regardless. Uh, let's see if anything is interesting in the chat. St. Inky, side note, for all watercolor flower fans, there is a live demo tonight of Snowdrops from Fabio. Oh, Fabio is so good. Yeah, check that out. Maybe I will tune in too. Um, introduce some greens in the background. Yeah, that could have been a good option too. Uh, Why well, I'm definitely continuing on JoJo's. It's so interesting to see how Araki's style uh, evolves and changes over time. Yeah, I will. Once I finish with Attack on Titan. Um... Whiskers were white gel pen. Yep. No, it's not cheating. I do that all the time. Funny. Megan, John, I really love the blend of soft and hard edges. Really pretty abstract. Same. I agree. Uh, masking fluid can work well for whiskers too. Yeah, I think for whiskers though, it will be much easier to do it like that with white gel pen because you can get the flickering, flickering, flicking motion uh, with masking fluid and tape. Not so much, you know. Uh, Turner. Artist license, yeah, definitely. Artistic license to change. Okay, so Lisa, yeah, Lisa T, Lisa T. Uh, first oil ever started painting during the lockdown. Amazing work. I love that. Now, again, I'm not an expert in oils, so I don't have much to say. Honestly, I love it. The flowers, they look really good against that dark background. I think your values are pretty on point. One thing I'm trying to figure out, if the angles are correct, that fence is really tall if the perspective is correct. So I'm trying to figure out what angle we're at. I suspect we're at a lower angle than the lines at the bottom hint at. 
I'm not sure because I don't see the reference, but again, that thing, right? So that's the line. The line looks like this. Should be a little more like that. Maybe. I'm just guessing because I don't see the reference photo. Uh, but I will say that it's, it looks really good. And I love that the house at the back is a little blended, a little muted, right? Um, you could, like, I'm missing a bit of light somewhere. It looks very dark to me, maybe on the ground, maybe something like that, or I'm not sure. And I will give you one final note for a composition. So that house that's here on the left side, it feels to me very close to the edge. And it could have been a, a bit more satisfying of a composition had you continued the, the painting a bit more in that direction and have a bit more of an open space to the right of the house. Because right now there's barely any sky, which is fine. You don't have to have sky, but that's what I would do. I'd add a bit more to the right. And again, I'm trying to give you fundamentals related tips because yeah, I can't comment too much on technique because I'm not an expert in oils. But yeah, I hope that makes sense, Lisa. Great work. Keep it up if you're just started, you know, um, in, 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 in the, during the lockdown. Just continue. Honestly, just continue practicing. You'll make it. You'll get there. Martha, okay, yes, you do have your painting. So Martha Strogan, your my critique for you is very interesting. So you achieved something here that many don't. And actually, it's great. So when I look at it from afar, I see the overall shapes and composition really well. So this is advice I rarely give. Like, So usually I'll say you lost the overall composition when you focus too much on the details. You didn't. <laughs> like I can see the water very clearly, um, the people, um, the, the rocks and everything. And you, you achieved it wet and wet, which is huge. I see that you made a lot of it in one go. That's really, really clever. What I would work on improving is just the way you render the details. And this isn't an easy scene at all. I would probably be forced to, and by the way, it's just catching a fish, right? That's super cool. So I would be forced to change something because the light and shadow isn't strong enough. And I'm not that good with scenes that are overcast or you know like that. So the way you approach it is actually very brave. One thing I'm missing a bit is, so notice one thing, uh, where uh, the person on the right standing, the legs, they're on a dark surface. So I would actually be brave and darken it a bit more and create a contrast with the light rocks. Because right now the light rocks merge, and, and I love that they merge, but there is enough of a lower smooth shape that you can close it off and darken a bit more those greens and have uh, the the person on the right anchored more to the ground. Okay. Now the way you render the rocks and the water and the trees and all of that that's very hard to do when you don't have clear light and shadow conditions. So good job. That's what I would practice. Actually, I'd practice this technique of figuring out okay how do I simplify the rocks in a way that isn't overworked because right now they're a little overworked right there uh, there is a little too much scratchiness to them how can you simplify them even more how can you simplify the patterns in the water because I do see a pattern where the water is and then the foam behind it right so these are the kinds of things I would work on I love the trees uh, I would merge them a bit more with the greenery and have it a bit more of a flowy wash with a bit of less of that waviness in the foliage, but that's my personal taste, honestly. So this is what I would do. I think the painting is like 80% done. All you have to do is now put the final touches, a bit dark here, a bit dark there, and practice rendering the details a bit more. So to preserve what you're doing great is you notice the overall shapes, which is very rare and a lot of people miss. So good job on that. One more small touch, I would say, and a small nitpick where these rocks to the left of the uh, of the waterfall meet the water, this is a great place to preserve a soft edge. And you used a bit of a hard edge there. Um, that would be good to kind of blend that in and have our attention not be pulled there. Uh, so that's kind of a small technical thing that you could improve. Other than that, great job. Keep noticing the large shapes. That's really important. Onwards. Okay, it's good. My voice is tiring and I'm super tired. So we'll we'll finish this one on time. Michael P sent me this one. So Michael, I do 
wonder what your reference is. I would have wanted to see it because it's very hard to comment because it is very stylized. And I wonder, okay, did you plan to make it stylized or did you try and go for something different? Um, so in terms of flow, you're actually good. You got the background flowy. You have the white edges syndrome, which is very common. And it's it's hard to combat sometimes. So you have this white border around the flowers. You kept your distance, which is good. Um, I would challenge you to have that same wash from top to bottom and try and paint and cut closer to the flowers. And that's something that people often, when you paint a scene with people in it, with figures, that's when a lot of people leave that white gap, that annoying white gap. There are a few ways to combat it. First, if you want to mask a highlight or something like that, you can use a masking fluid. Again, here it may work better, masking tape even or you can practice your negative painting. In which case, you work from top to bottom, very wet wash, have the paper at an angle, and just work carefully and close in on the flowers. Don't leave that white gap behind them. That's the main point I have for this one. I need to see the reference to know more. I love these patterns that you did with the roots under the vase and on the wall. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks so good, actually. And even where the table meets the background or that transition from brown to the top. Those wavy lines and it's super abstract quality. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you want to aim for a more realistic approach, I would go for something with stronger contrast, stronger shapes of light and shadow. If you want to do something that's more expressionistic, that's a good approach for sure. I'm not sure if you're here. We'll see. Um, Lisa, oh yeah, YM says Lisa has a dreamlike quality to me. It's not entirely realistic, but has a lot of mood. Yep, yep, I agree. A lot of it, and part of that dreamlike or like mood is everything is brown, right? It's like it's like she tinted the whole thing with a brown and started from that point. Uh, so yeah, I love that. I love that kind of a thing. Very, um, very impressionistic. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know why. Why is it like that? I'm not sure. Let me see. Wait a second. I want to make sure I know your name. Um, let's see here. Vids. I critique part two group. Are we in group two now? Yeah, we're in group two. Good. So that we Mon. That's that's supposed to be an M. I don't know why it looks like that. That's Mon. Beautiful work. Really, really nice. So you have the same kind of a thing. So first off, let's start with the sky, actually. The sky looks super cool. And you've got quite a lot of nuance in it, which I love. As for the dog, and we got a lot of animals today, you have the same syndrome for the first one by Les Sanchez that maybe uh, some of you have missed because a lot of people joined late. Uh, I've shown this painting, let me scroll up real fast, where there is a lot of attention to the darks and the lights, but not enough to the mid values. And then I showed the correction. So this is me adding with Photoshop some mid values and look at how much depth it adds when you compare it to the original painting that has no mid values as significant, right? So you have that same syndrome and that same fur overworking syndrome. And that's something that is very easy to fall into. So no worries to keep practicing. What I will commend, the drawing seems really on point, very accurate. And one more thing that I caught is the background. The fact that you put it like that with, um, with a dark, but still smooth transition, that really works for a clear impression. So if you would have put it as sharply as these grass blades, which I think are overworked and too much, but again, that's a matter of taste sometimes. If you would have put it the same way, it would have been a mess. The way you did it is so clever. You kept it smooth. You kept a smooth transition. I loved it. Great, great job on that. One more thing I'll add to it. Um, and again, the drawing is accurate, which is great. The eye, the fact that you just went for a pure blue, and I doubt that it's this light and pure in the photo. It could be. I may be mistaken, but I don't think so. That's great. That's a focal point right there. That's like you get pulled right into the eye. Great, great job on this one, Mon. And sorry that the name looks weird. I don't know what happened here. Uh, but yeah, great, great job. Uh, let us see what we have here. 
next painting. We don't have much to go through. We have Paula C. So can you tell, based on the feedback I've given so far, what's one thing in the drawing that could be improved? And this really showcases this issue. So again, things tend to be very flat the farther they are from us. And we're looking at a pretty vast view. So if you look at the way that river is shaped, again, this tendency to go very, very diagonal when it's not beneficial. I have to draw this for you. So let me draw this on paper and show you. The river, it's so flat. that you get something like this. Can you see this, how flat it is? And that tendency to make it diagonal, there's nothing wrong with it per se to make it this diagonal. But the one thing is by doing that, you're making a statement, the angle is higher. That's the thing I want you to be aware of. You're basically saying the angle of <laughs> it's a dog touched by the Night King. Funny, but you're basically saying it's a higher angle. That's the thing I want you to pay attention to. Okay, policy. Um, that's the main thing here that I see in terms of the drawing. Really anchor it down by squeezing it together, making the diagonal less diagonal, and really just look at the reference photo. And I think some of it is exaggerated because of the angle at which the picture is taken. But I, I am sure that that it's also inaccurate because you can see how that line in the farther distance goes down like this where it should go flat right so one thing to pay attention to a couple of other things great ambition on the sky that's a very hard um pattern of clouds to get i won't i won't say anything about how you got it because i would i would have had so much trouble with it i think so keep working at it right keep improving the the technique you i can see a hint of capturing what is there right one thing i would say is improve the flow if anything, have a clear flow in the clean blue areas, right? I don't think I have the right to comment on, oh, the clouds could be better because that's a very tough cloud pattern that I might have avoided. But one thing, you have it in the clouds too. The clouds are a little flat too, and you made them diagonal. Watch out for that, okay? Everything is diagonal. Because of the nature of the scene, it goes into the distance, things flatten. So these diagonal lines that you have on the clouds that go like this, right? They're a little flatter. It's, a bit, it's not as felt as the river shape itself, but <coughs> pay attention to that. Sorry, I got the hiccups now. I have to drink some water. There we go. Now, one more thing you missed in terms of the values, right? The water is much darker, and then you get this beautiful sun rays uh, glistening on the water surface, right? So that's something you want to pay attention to. Close in the values, darken it. Everything that's under the sky is much darker, uh, excluding that highlight, right? Um, one more thing I will say, the same thing with the greens, <clears throat> right? Your greens are very vibrant. I have nothing against that. In fact, I like that. What you can try and do is start vibrant and as you move back, mute it a bit, which you actually started doing. I can see it for the trees in the back. You added a bit more of that, maybe red, maybe even black, and it made them a little more muted. More of that, right? Have it maybe a gradual transition from bottom to top because bottom is closer. Closer is green, and then the more you go up, go a little muted, right? Add a bit of red to the green. It'll mute it, look perfect. But good job. Good job on it. The, the reason there's a lot that I can share about uh, improving is because these are very common things that, that a lot of people deal. So you actually have a few very easy fixes. For one, the drawing is an easy fix because you just do it. You just be a little more careful with it, right? And then you have the way you plan the painting, the way you notice the values, the way you notice everything. Like the, it's it's It will come with experience, right? There's a lot of it is very hard to notice while you're painting. So yeah, white press, I think uh, a way to get these loose clouds is to lift while the paint is still very wet using a wet tissue. Yeah, and good good 
on you for saying wet tissue because if you use a dry, I've never tried wet tissue, so I can't comment on it. But dry tissue will get those two rough edges that look very wonky sometimes. So I, I never tried a wet tissue. I should try that. I have no idea how that'll work. Great suggestion. Uh, okay, next up we have Rajnish. Uh, very good job. I love this. I don't have the reference photo, unfortunately. And I love your signature. It's really neat. That looks so good. Uh, let me just check real fast what we have here. Okay, yeah, yeah. White Reza, you have to be uh, patient because yours is the last one, unfortunately. But uh, so yeah, I hope you'll still be here. Uh, Rajnish, a couple of things. First off, great job on the temperature. I love that you combine warm and cool, and you can see that the areas closer to the roofs are a little warm, and then it goes cool, which is a common pattern when you have these shingled rooftops. Uh, sometimes there is bouncy light that re-wets the, you say uh, wet tissue can be a game changer. I'll, I have to test it out. I have to test it out. So that sounds sounds very, like it makes sense to me. So you start with the yellow and go blue. I love that. Great touch. What I would maybe consider, and here's, here's an example of maybe more long-term or higher level thinking. You did it all throughout the painting. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Maybe... Keep that yellow blue on the focal point, but then as you move down, simplify to just blue. That way, our attention is pulled away up immediately. Right now, it's pulled up thanks to the drawing, the shapes. You have this pointy rooftop with this detail on top of it. So yes, it pulls our attention, but all the different factors of the painting could work much better well, to, much better, well, much better together if you also allow the colors play that role. So in short, maybe don't repeat that yellow, blue, yellow, blue pattern all the way down, which you actually didn't do in some spots. Like not, the bottom one has it here, but then the one above it doesn't. It's just blue almost. So you already started doing that. A bit of a better balance would be achieved if you did it, I think, for everything that's lower than that. Okay, just my two cents. Now, some of the shadows on the building, I think, could be a little darker. I like that you can see through them, the windows, and you can see the wall, right? You can see the blue under them. Maybe just a little bit darker, smidge darker, okay? Now, I had one more note. Yeah, the sky and the cloud. Not sure if that's where I placed that, or maybe it's a mistake. I'm really not sure. You let me know. Um, what else? I had another comment, I think. Maybe just, okay, so the shingles that are lower improve the flow there. It will go a long way. They feel very rough. Now, I'm okay with them being rough around the focal point because that roughness pulls our attention. But as, again, as you look down, have them a little looser and a little just like a shape, just an orange shape without all of the details. That will really pull our attention more. Again, see how everything works together. Shapes, values. Um, um, details, they all work together to pull us onto that rooftop. That yellow, that uh, yellow, that white in the sky actually works also to pull us there. So I think it's a good job. I think it's a good idea. Maybe make it a little longer and natural so that it crosses through the top. But very good job. Without seeing the reference, I cannot comment too much more, but hopefully I've given you enough to work with. So now we have Shanze, which is uh, a, a very lovely painting. I remember this one you sent me, I believe, both PDF and a picture. Ended up using one of them. I don't remember which one. They were both similar quality. Uh, so one thing I really like about this one is it has clarity. Clarity in colors, clarity in composition. So here's the thing. You use two very clear colors. You use that cobalt blue or kind of a turquoise blue and an orange. And notice the th same thing as we've seen before. Orange is muted, but the, the bluish green is actually strong. That works really well for a composition. I would actually increase the contrast, overall speaking. Make the darks a little darker and the lights a little lighter. Have a stronger contrast with the shadow. That's one thing I would do, but I love that. Now, one thing I want to commend you for is look to the left. You actually tried out the mixing. I can tell you put work into your colors. It's not an accident that they work well. And that's something that I always um, encourage, right? The, the fact that they look good and it's not a coincidence, it's actually deliberate. You worked for it. That's something that, that I always love seeing. So great job on that. Um, 
what would I improve? Maybe a bit of the flow there in the in the white areas. Though I actually like it. I just feel like I'm lacking a bit of clarity in the shadows. Just having the shadows a bit smoother, both under the fish uh, and on their bodies could go a long way, right? And of course, the water could be smoother as well. I think it has to do with the paper you're using. I also see it buckles quite a bit. Uh, maybe it looks, of course, there's a spiral bound, so it's a sketchbook, so maybe the paper is not the best. Um, but yeah, other than that, really good. Good composition, good idea, like the yin and yang shape. That's yin and yang. That's really good. Way to go. Not much to improve here. Uh, I would say just keep practicing, keep experimenting. Uh, you will definitely see uh, continued growth if you just continue doing that. Uh, Tarun Vaid, how are you? I think you're not here today. Hope everything is well if you're watching it after the fact. This is a great example of composition. Tarun improved upon the original in so many ways, right? The, it's very hard to compete with real life. So the way you approach this one is better than real life. And yes, there is a nice contrast in the photo between the white areas and the background. But who says you have to include that, right? So you actually did something brilliant. And a lot of people, including myself, have trouble with foliage. You got the foliage. Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Nice. You got the foliage in the background and in the foreground to the T. So there's so much I love about this. I'm going to just lay it out. First, you put those grass blades but you blended their edges. You blended them together. It's one shape. Even though you're showing, you're showing the maximum amount of details possible while still maintaining a flow. So you put the grass blades and then you blend them. That's honestly something I don't know how to do. Like I need to practice that ASAP. That's a great technique. Now, you also have a nice contrast with the ground. The ground is light. The grass blades are dark or whatever it is. It's not grass. Maybe it's like, you know, the, what do you call the water plant, whatever. And then the ground, you change the ground. You made it feel like it's at an angle and the edge is very interesting. Now let's talk colors. You actually made the colors more saturated, more interesting, more cool. The fact you added an exaggerated blue on the feet and in the neck and in the beak, that is just A plus work really loved it. You also made the body more saturated. Um, the, the oranges really, you know, sing. The the white next to the tail, brilliant. White and then the shadow. Look at the shadow. Look at how the shadow is one shape of shadow. It's not overworked, right? Um, one area that doesn't feel overworked, but I just wonder how I would do it is this here because you really got the values accurately. But I wonder if there's a way to make it even more unified. I'm not sure about that because you really recreated it to the T. Awesome job. Really have nothing to improve here. Uh, it's one of those rare occasions that you missed the shadow of the head the head and the neck, but I think compositionally it's smarter the way you did it. Um, this is a very strong focal point, the butt <laughs> and the tail. I would wonder like how can I make the head maybe a stronger focal point, even though the head is dark and the background is light. So I don't know. I think it's also a strong focal point. But the thing, funny enough, the thing I'm most impressed by is the grass. That grass or leaves is so good. And it looks like you added a few touches, either scratches or some kind of an opaque paint on top of that. Very clever. Very, very clever. Tarun, you did an excellent job. I honestly don't know what, what else to say. Uh, I don't know if you're here. Let me check. Let me look at the chat a bit, see what I missed. Um, and White say, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm not here for mine. Enjoy all the great. Thank you so much. Uh, Megan says that's a great tip. I'm gonna try it out. Finding the right amount of moisture for the tissue in good timing requires some testing, but cloud studies are always great exercise anyway. Uh, White Rose, I wonder, did you ever use a sponge? I wonder about that. Now, I'm not sure if yours, uh, oh, we have a few more. Okay, we have two more, two more to go. So, uh, next we have uh, Vanessa. Banani, which you're you're here, I think, right? I saw you here. Um, hope you're seeing this. Um, and White Reza, I would like to ask because if because you're here already, I wonder about. So if you can tell me a bit more about the study you made, we'll get to you in just a few seconds. But I'm curious if you can write it for me in the chat. Just like what did you do here? What was the purpose? And then we'll talk about the finished one, which I love. I love this road. And we'll get to it. In just a few seconds. Uh, but because you're here and you're active in the chat, I want you to write down if you can. 
Um, let's see here if there's anything interesting. The goose, yeah, it's definitely brilliant. Megan says, wow, I think it's perfect. Colors are amazing, interesting gadgets. Yeah, sometimes I just don't have anything to add to. Uh, maybe the shadows, slightly too dark. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So if you want to take maybe a bit of the attention off of this area, go a little lighter, maybe it will bounce towards the head, but that's super like nitpicking. And honestly, I don't, I don't know if I would have been able to achieve as good of a result here. Uh, but yeah, way to go. Uh, Vanessa, I think you need to work mainly on your uh, artistic... Um, um, not self-confidence. I'm looking for another word for it because you initially didn't know if you should include it or if you should cancel this being, I don't remember exactly what we talked about, but like, it's good. I love it. I love it. And it actually reminds me of some of the first portraits I attempted. So a couple of things I'm seeing here. Did you use opaque paint? I, Cause I bet this is opaque. This is the top in the flames. It looks so good. So first off, I'll say, I'm not sure about the reference. You'll have to tell me more about it, but it's tough. And I think you did a really, really good job at it. I think you tell this story very well. It does feel to me like blue flames. So motif-wise and idea-wise, which is arguably the most important thing, you really nailed it. So good job on that. I love that you're using multiple types of blues. One thing to consider, again, this has to do with the motif. You could make the fire look even bluer if you would reverse it and used a bit of red, let's say, some some place on maybe in the shadows, right? Maybe in, in on the face, on the face itself. Because that's like a trip. You're like, oh, the fire is, uh, is cool, right? And the, and the portrait itself is warm. But again, that has to do with your goal and what you, your plan. Maybe you didn't plan for that. But I think it could have been cool to play a bit more on that contrast in temperature and go very blue and then a bit of red and you could use that same concept we've seen so far of the blue is very saturated so use a muted red like a dark perlin kind of you know even a chronacridone would have worked here magenta and just for that now as for the light and shadow they're actually quite soft it's still clear you can tell like the the shadow on the nose and then the the side of the nose the left side of the face all of that that's really clear one thing i would warn you against and again it will depend on your goal is avoiding symbols and you have that going with the eyes and the lips especially especially the eyes though you drew them in a very symbolic way like top curve bottom curve now the actual shape of the eyes is not as simplified as that now i have nothing against that but if you want to crank up the likeness and realism a bit more that's something i would work on and you'll notice also the eyes at a bit of a, an incorrect angle. So especially that left eye, which is to our right. So the angle is something like this, where it should be stronger angle. The, the face itself is a bit more diagonal. So tilt it a bit more. That's the one thing I would improve, I think. Um, the one thing I would improve in terms of the drawing, right? Uh, so in the lips, the same way. Try and avoid symbols and actually see things the way they are. With that great job and great job for keeping the lights light and not being scared to go dark on the darks i love that and it's very creative and i think you nailed the the motif here this is something i barely know how to do honestly like to have an idea and play with that and not do just a an enhanced version of the reference about an actual like idea right story that's more than just sunshine or mood right i love that great job and White Reza, last one. I'm going to read what you wrote. Uh, last but not least. Yes, yes, that's you. Let me see here. Um, try to sponge once. Nice for texture example. Oh, okay, okay. So more for texture, not for clouds. <clears throat> the painting I sent you is based on a ref picture generated by an AI. Yeah, I remember you said that. Basically, the first picture I said to the program, put water here, put a house here, put trees here. Oh, that's cool. So it's like an algorithm that actually builds a scene. Oh, that's nice. Because I do know the algorithms where you put a picture in a style, you upload a few pictures of a style, like you could upload a few paintings of someone and it creates the photo like the paintings, which is cool. But you actually render the scene. That's really neat. So you told it, put water, put house, put trees. Okay. 
Okay, that's really cool. AI is gonna kill us all one <laughs> day. That's really neat. Okay, that's the meaning of the <clears throat> colored areas. Okay. In fact, my little brother did. Oh, wait, okay. That's the meaning. Oh, I see. So it's actually. Oh, that's cool. And that's how you gave it instructions? That's really interesting. Huh. That is really interesting. I never saw anything like that. Yeah, uh, you sent me the link to the website. I'll check it out. Now, in fact, my little brother did the ref picture after I sent him the link to the AI, and I found the results so amazing. I painted it. My little brother did a ref picture. So he painted it, and you painted it based on his. Let me know. I'm not sure I understood on that, but that's really that's really neat. Uh, that one with the house is lovely. Uh, but I, I started with uh, Prima watercolors and later on more opaque gouache. Okay, the reference is a Snapchat photo. Oh, with a filter probably, yes. Thank you for the tip of using red in the darks. And yes, the eyes are uh, off into symbolic. Yeah, and again, a lot of it will come down to your expression, right? Maybe you want to express it this way. Uh, but great job, really. Uh, you can uh, feel more confident about your work, really, and continue practicing, take it to the next level. Uh, so back to white Reza. Yeah, okay, okay, I see. For instance, here it distinguishes between river, purple, and lake, light blue. Oh, that's super cool. So let's see, so let's see here. That's really neat. So one thing I would I would say that I would personally improve, um, it feels to me like a lot of the parts of the painting are a little split and fragmented. And I think I could do a wash over it, just like it is, and it will bring it to where I imagine it to be. So what do I mean by that? All the foliage to the left could be merged with the shadow on that road or, yeah, the, I guess it's a road, right, that leads to the house. Uh, the cast shadows, merge them together. It's, again, that thing with local color. So, yes, the left is orange and the road is blue, light blue, but the shapes, con the shadows connect them, right? So if you put a strong shadow on the orange and connect it completely to the shadows on the road, make it one big shape and connect it to the foliage on the right. It will feel more together. You see what I mean? Same goes for everything that's behind the house. It could all be simplified to one big shape that maybe starts warm and then goes a little cooler. You get what I mean by that? The details on the house could be improved, but that's, that's minor in my opinion. That overarching shadow that connects everything together that's what I have for you. That's the thing I would like to see you work on. Same for the water, could be darker, right? Again, some of it is stylistic choice, but it could be darker. The color matching is really good though. I like that. The colors are pretty close. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention, which I forgot now. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you put the darks, like I just explained, I think it will put the details in the right context. Because right now, the details are just a tiny bit overworked. There's a lot of them. A lot of this very dark against a lighter shape. So if you take a few steps back and squint your eyes, you'll just notice there is a shadow that binds everything together. It's like glue. And just by adding this one wash over this, you could immediately tie all the shapes together. That would be the main, I think, feedback for this one. I really like it. Good color matching, and it's pretty amazing AI created the original. That's really amazing. Uh, so he said, I discovered the AI, sent a link to the program to my brother. He generated a photorealistic. Oh, OK, OK, OK. That's crazy. That's really crazy. I have to test it out. Can you, if you haven't sent me the link to the actual program, uh, if you can send it over. And I'm happy you see this. By the way, if you're having a hard time seeing this, just turn both black and white. Turn the reference and the photo black and white, you'll immediately and I'm I feel bad that I didn't do it because that would have been a, a, a good like aha moment, right? Uh, like we had here hopefully a few times in this live stream. Uh, but yeah, great job. Great job and great job, everyone. Let's go fast over everything. Just real fast. Um, like take a, two minutes, maybe. Uh Sola Sanchez, we talked a bit about that, you know, dark slight mid values. We have this kind of coherent shapes that something to work on, but very good color matching. Keep it up. Uh, Rebecca had zero things to correct. You have your style. You keep working on it. Uh, I would actually, you know what, just a quick note. Practice if you aren't. I know it could sound boring and really old-fashioned, but if you don't, try and do a few super realistic scenes 
just to taste it, I think you can bring some elements from it to your style that will make it wow even more. But but I wouldn't like I wouldn't see this as improvement. I would see this as either growth or exploration because I don't think you need that improvement. You're you're on it like you're on it. So yeah, I will say again, it depends on your goal. But I would be a little more deliberate and careful with my values. Okay, light in the middle, dark on the sides. Try and capture that overall thing. Like take a few steps back from the reference and really try and see it for what it is. That's the main thing I would say for you. By the way, it could be the way you took the picture too. I'm not sure it's hard to tell, uh, but yeah, that's the thing for you. Stefania flow mainly, right? Pay attention to the value scheme in general, like depth, forward, you know, all these good things. <clears throat> Sujata, the same thing about the opaque paints, the overall balance, right? Try and balance all of the details with more looser areas like you have done very successfully in two out of three of these. Uh, Supriya, I love this. Again, proportions in the drawing. Don't be as linear. Try and focus on shapes. You did a great job. Excellent job. Preventing excellent job too, the way you rendered these feathers in the middle. That's like the, the best spot in my opinion. Great, great job. Zhao, the idea of colors, right? Shadows have colors in them. Feel free to put them in. Overarching dark shapes for the sky. More flow. More flow is like the, the, the thing that repeats here everywhere. Same thing here. Flow and also notice the perspective. Uh, Alessandro, Carla, perfect love. A lot of these. I wouldn't be curious to see the reference for the right one. Shariko, thank you so much for painting me. That's awesome. And again, some of the high level, like how do you differentiate that turkey from the tree in the background? Hanny, same thing we talked about. Maybe add a bit more of a focal point, but honestly, this is perfect. 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 Like so many good works here. Joanna, I love this one. Kiran, I can see myself in that. You, you want to work on the drawing. <clears throat> I think you have a lot of potential. A lot, a lot of potential. Great job, Lisa. Great job, Martha. That is just really neat works. Like, really, really neat works. Michael, that uh, white uh, border syndrome, something to work on. Mon, same thing with the mid values. Paula, same thing with the perspective. You see a lot of recurring themes, right? This one is very good. So the, the advice was very high level, like overall composition. That's the thing I would improve here. Sean's a good job. They're an amazing job. Everyone, amazing job. And that's an amazing job. White Reza, amazing. This was really fun. This was really fun. Very, um, <clears throat> very rich, content rich. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you were able to learn quite a bit too, because I really tried to cram in a lot of paintings, right? Uh, Dragonfly Art Cafe. Hey, late, but glad to be here. Hello, Liron. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully, you got to see at least that quick review, right? Uh, that was fun. Rolf, the old man by the ocean in Norway says hello uh, and try to follow your instructions as good as I can. Oh, that's really cool. Um, uh, at the same time, I have to say that your haircut this time was rather well done. Oh, thank you. It's super short, shorter than usual. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to the at least the top to grow a little longer. But yeah, thank you so much. Chris, how are you doing? I'm very late, but enjoying the uh, run through. Yeah, it's a good thing I did a run through. YM, I got to leave as it's really late. You're already good. Stream, great stream. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here, YM. Uh, I'll definitely try and watch JoJo's. Uh, John says, I learned a lot. Thanks. Great paintings, everyone. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for sharing and being courageous. Uh, Olivier uh, Belnard says, success is to overpass mistakes without losing the enthusiasm. Winston Churchill. Yeah, that's a great quote. That's a great quote. You know what? I never lose enthusiasm for painting. I just keep going. It's so fun to discover. Uh, as long as you have hope for improvement, and that's very much dependent on you and how you structure your uh, practice and, and just overall approach, you can go really far, really, really far. Uh, White Reza, French watercolor channel, Tribulation de Marie, did a vid presenting the AI, but I don't think uh, there is. I'm not familiar with that French watercolor channel. I'd be curious to see it because I don't know many uh channels that i'm not subscribed to already let me search it now through relations the marie watercolor i'm curious to see how could how could i miss a watercolor channel by the way i want to thank you all for being super engaged with the last couple of videos the la latest video i posted was really successful so thank you so much the one with the mistake to avoid it was a pretty clickbaity title right don't do this or stop doing this but it worked and a lot of people found it helpful so i'm very pleased 
Caitlin says, please do another. I love this. We'll definitely do another one. Probably not. Ne oh, Tarun, hey, you're here. Awesome work, my friend. Awesome work. Uh, probably not next week because uh, I got to vary it up for myself. Maybe the week after that, we can do more critiques. Next week, I um, foresee a painting process or just chat. Probably a painting process. Uh, that's where it'll, it'll be. Uh, Megan says, I just subscribed the other day. Uh, so I'm going through all your videos. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, if you, you can filter them by best or most watched, I think, and that will give you a good idea of the ones people found most uh, useful. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome aboard. Uh, White Reza, by the way, Leron, thanks for your comprehensive presentation about your new realism course. Are you finally getting good at marketing? Oh, yeah, I'm actually improving, I think. I think I'm improving, and I have to. It's like, it's time. It's time to take the business to the next level. I'll definitely buy it once I have uh, more time, the time to invest. Yeah, that's very smart. That's very smart. I, that's what I would al always encourage you. If I would much rather that people who buy the courses actually make use of them. I, I, I earn so much if you actually use it because I know you'll be engaged. You'll, um, you'll uh, buy more future stuff and you'll find it more relevant and you'll grow based on it. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think you could sell that for 10 times the price, not joking. Uh, maybe, maybe. I, You know, I'm familiar with some courses out there that go for slightly more expensive, but have 10 times more content, not in watercolor, maybe in drawing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe I could. Maybe I'll increase the prices. I actually consider doing it because it's part of a funnel. So if you buy it standalone, Maybe it should be more expensive, but for now it's good. It's good. Um, I'm testing it out. Maybe I'll um, create another product that's a little more expensive for the next one, and then we'll see about that. Uh, Taco fourteen fourteen says this was interesting and helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Torun. I did wet on wet for grass, then started adding thicker consistency. Oh, that's genius. Okay, okay, I see. When the paper was drying, I did glazing with bright yellows and Chinese white for some lighter grass. Cool. So we actually did the grass initially wet and wet. That's great control. That's really cool. I wasn't sure if you painted some blades and then maybe sprayed or blended them with water. Great job, Torun. Great job. So thank you so, so much, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. I will just drop a few plugs because I have to near the end of the video. First off, if you can drop a like before we end this one, it will help more people later discover it too. It tells YouTube, oh, this is interesting. Send more people there. Then if you want your paintings critiqued in a future one, and I have a lot of you sent me after I finished organizing for this one, I will definitely do that. So just send them over to Liron at Liron Yan. Probably not next week maybe the week after. If you do want to do something that's more proper, like one-on-one, -on -one, check out the new Patreon critiques tier. I actually have someone join today and I'm super grateful for that. Uh, and I'll probably at some point limit the spots, but for now, let's see if people get in. Um, did I drop something? No, good. Um, but yeah, if you're really working hard and trying to improve and you feel stuck, that's a great option. You can always join do one month and then cancel if you got what you wanted and you can move forward on your own. And lastly, just links to all the courses, not just watercolor realism. Everything is in the description box. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, hey, Robert, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Olivier. Great quote again. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Born Again Farm Girl. Uh, by the way, you'll be uh, happy to hear that I just saw the Born Again. And before I managed to read the rest, I already remembered your username. It was a bit of a risk to just say, Farm Girl without seeing it because, you know, username. Sometimes it's hard to remember, but I remember it correctly. And White Reza, thank you so, so much. Merci. Uh, and we'll wrap it up. We'll talk to you again real soon. We'll see you in Saturday's video. A good one on how to paint shiny and reflective surfaces. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, so thank you so, so much. We'll talk soon.